Hey, what's up guys? It's Brendan. Back with my next vlog number four. Just wanted to give you guys a quick update of what's going on in my neck of the woods. Um, you guys have been very, very awesome on the channel, on my Instagram, on my Facebook. And I mean, I can't thank you guys enough. So continue to keep those questions coming. And as you guys um, release them, I mean, I will answer them as soon as I get to them. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty good about answering my followers um, pretty fast. So... Um, you know, if I, if I over, overlook you, um, then, you know, just send me another message. I'll make sure I get with it. Um, today, as you guys know that I have changed all of my Canon lenses, pretty much every last one of them over to Sigma. And I wanted to share something with you guys today, and we're actually going to do it together. So, as you know, I shoot with my very, very trusty 5D Mark IV. Um, I mean, what else can I say about the 5D Mark IV, man? It's just a reliable, vicious camera. I absolutely love it. No problems. It lasts me pretty much all day, so I love it. So, let's get to what we all came here today for. So... After, you know, I do this unboxing, then we're going to talk about a few things and I'm going to give you my input um, as well as answer some of the questions that's been coming through my YouTube channel um, and my Instagram, okay? So, um, as you guys know, I have the infamous 85mm 1.4 Art. Uh, this is my bread and butter now. This lens is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. I mean, it, can't, it don't get no better than the 85 um, also, you know, I have the 135 uh, millimeter f1.8. These lenses together is just is amazing. Um, also, as you know, when I go um, wide angle, as you guys have seen on some of my shoots, um, I always go with the 20 millimeter 1.4 art. A lot of people ask me, why do you use a 20 millimeter 1.4? I'll tell you why. Because it gives amazing ultra wide angle. It's sharp as all get out, and it also gives me the shallow depth of field. So I'm able to frame my model, whether it be the left frame or the right frame, and capture amazing footage in the background. It's one of those things that you pick up as a technique, and it's abs it, it creates stunning images. And once you get it and you know how to actually use it, this is pretty much all the wide angle that I need. Um, I really don't need to go any closer than 20 millimeters. Um, I don't do a really a lot of landscape photography, but if I did, I would use this. Um, and one of my current shoots, you're going to see me use this a lot, the 20 millimeter 1.4. So um, I'm going to put that one right there. And as you guys know, I now have added the 35 millimeter 1.4 art. Yes, I have the Trinity now. As you knew, I had the 35 1.4 Canon. I had the, the 135 F2, and I had the 85 millimeter 1.2. L2 lens. They were amazing, um, but I just felt like I wasn't getting that pop in my stuff. So I changed over to all, oh my God, look at that. 35 millimeter, 1.4 Sigma art. Yes, it is here. And there you have it. Here, let me move it for you. So all the art so that is my holy trinity art yes i have a new system going on 35 i'm gonna switch this bam 35 85 135 20. crazy now as you know i still do have my 70 to 200 temron vcf 2.8 and also do still have my 24 to 70 temron vcf 2.8 so I still have my, you know, my ranges and my focal lens covered just in case I do want to do a little zooming. But as of right now, I mean, man, look, I am super excited. All art lenses. Um, as you do know, Sigma just came out, released the 24 to 70 um, 2.8 art. So I'm probably looking into getting rid of my Tamron um, 2.8. Uh, I don't know yet. I might. So. They also came out with another brand new lens, the 14 millimeter. Um, I think it's a 1.8, um, I actually believe. So 
Um, but the, I, I was looking at the 24, 20, 24 to 70, and if it's as sharp as I think it is, man, it is going to be a phenomenal lens. I can't wait to get my hands on it and try it out with the rest of my art family. So, also, check it out. So, as you guys know, I am a fanatic when it comes to Canon. I've been shooting Canon forever, um, and this is all I really do shoot Canon. But I picked up something else for you guys. I picked up, and now listen, that's a disclaimer. I am not going to Sony. I want to make that clear. Mike, I know you out there. I am not going to Sony. But, so I feel like as a photographer, I should be well-rounded in with, with the clash of the titans, you know, which is Sony and Canon right now, pretty much. Um, and I absolutely, I absolutely love Canon. Now, yes, Sony is trying to be innovative. They are trying to do a lot of things, but they're also coming out with a lot of products. So I, I feel, my personal opinion, that is that's kind of mediocre. You, when you come out with a product, you want it to work. You know, you don't want all these issues. And I posted on somebody's channel. I said, Canon reminds me of Apple. Sony reminds me of Samsung. Because these are the two people who are the clash of the titans in the cell phone world or wireless world. So as you know, when at, when Samsung comes out with products, like I have the Note 5, I, they come out with a lot of products and sometimes their products might not be as good. They might freeze a lot. You might, you guys might run into issues, just like we just had the battery issue with the Note uh, 7. Yeah, we had the battery issue with, I'm sorry, the Note 6, one of them, it's Note 7, Note 6. Um, and I mean, they come out with some things and sometimes it's not all it's cracked up to be. Sometimes it's gonna have issues um, and that, but sometimes they do release pro good products. Apple, on the other hand, comes out with these products, iPhone 4, 4S, 4C, iPhone 5, 5C, 5S, iPhone 6. A lot of those phones only had a few things that they changed from phone to phone. Everybody knows that, especially if you like Apple. They came out with one phone, they changed one or two things. They came out with another phone, they changed one or two things. Canon, but the thing about it is, is Apple, have their product is amazing they have amazing quality they have a their 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 products is very fluent um but i'm just not an apple person um and they they have less bugs in their in their equipment it's the same thing with canon canon has amazing products yes we might not get three or four or five different bells and whistles every time canon releases a camera but they give you the utmost quality they give you quality over quantity because they don't want you coming back in five, six, seven months or three, two, actually a month or two saying, hey, this is overheating. Hey, this, this camera's bending. Hey, this, 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 and this. I mean, they come out, I think their products are a lot more better in quality, overall quality than Sony. Um, and Sony's just releasing stuff, releasing stuff, releasing stuff. So, I mean, I mean, no, no biggie to, the, to all the Sony shooters and everything, but... Like I said, I'm Canon. I've never had a problem with my Canon right now. I'm filming this on the Canon 80D, um, and I have my 5D. So I wanted to get more vast in the Sony system just to see what it is. So what did I do? I went out and picked up the Sony A6000. Ain't that crazy? So I picked up the Sony A6000, and I also got um, an R2 trigger um, for my, as you know, I shoot with my Explorer 600. Um, and I also a couple speed lights sometimes when I'm doing my um, when I'm doing my photo shoots. Um, I also picked up the MC11 adapter. So the thing about this is now I've already tried this. I've taken my MC11 adapter and I have attached each of these lenses. My thoughts on this MC11 adapter with these lenses. Now I really wanted to see what all the hype was about. I wanted to see if the photographers out there was really telling you guys the truth when it came to the MC11 adapter. Um, on these cameras. Now, will the Sony A6000 be different than the A7R2 and how it performs? Not so much. All right, I haven't put the MC11 adapter on the A7R2 and, te and tested it myself. But I can tell you, when I mounted the 85, the 135, and the 20 on this MC11 adapter with the Sony A6000, it focused and I was able to do pretty much everything because it works fine. However, the focusing is slower. I will tell you that. I have finally got to test it myself. And the aperture blades slowly 
they slow to focus. Now, I've already updated this for everybody saying, well, you need to update. No, I've already updated this. But taking this off of here and putting it on my 5D Mark IV and then putting it on the MC11 adapter is that the performance is the performance goes down about at least 20%, 20 to 25%. Maybe I'm probably even being nice. Um, but I've tried it myself. I've tried it myself finally. Now, I am going to do a photo shoot with the A6000 R2 trigger MC11 adapter, and I'm going to do a full photo shoot with this. And I'm gonna let, I'm, you guys are going to see it firsthand. And I'm going to see if my style, I want to see what kind of style I can bring to this Sony A6000. Um, but I went through it. The menus on this thing is so confusing, man. Oh, my God. Compared to working with Sony, I've spent about two or three days just going through this menu, trying to find out where your white balances is, manual mode, your video mode. Um, I program all the buttons to the, you know, um, I autofocus. I, I, I've done pretty much all of that. Um, single shooting, continuous, high continuous. Um, you name it, I was going through it just like I would on my Canon. It's just so confusing. Now, I will tell you that I do like this EVF. So, the e I'm going to tell you why I like the EVF and how why it works for me. Because a lot of us, when we're using strobes and you go, go on location, um, with my Canon, when we're, when we're exposing for our ambient, a lot of times when we take a shot and we're, we're doing chimping, if, if you guys don't know what chimping is, chimping is when you have to take a picture and then look at the picture, make sure it's good, and then focus again. and then take, That's chimping. So there's a lot of chimping that goes on when you're using the, when, you, when I'm using Canon. Now, it doesn't bother me. I really don't, I, I could care less. Um, but when you take a shot and you're underexposing without your trigger on here, you have to look at it to see how dark it is and, and you have to account for the background that you want to get the background that you want. Um, and you have to continue to take shots until you get exactly where you want. And then you to pop on your trigger and then you can start messing around with the power outage on your strobes. Now, with the A6000 using the EVF, I was able pretty much to look into the EVF and dial my and dial my shutter speed down and get the exposure that I want without doing all of that. I was actually able to dial it down, dial it down, and I'm like, okay, that's a good shot. Take the shot. And I was still looking at it, but I really don't have to because what I saw in the camera is actually what I got. It's pretty pretty cool. Um, and then I could pop my trigger on and it saves a little it saves a little bit more time. Is that a deal breaker for me? Absolutely not. But I'm just telling you that the EVF on that thing, I was pretty excited to actually use it and see how it works. So kudos to Sony for you know for the EVF. Um, but I mean it's definitely not something that is gonna drive me to Sony no way no how. Um, so that's with my new toys. Um, that's all my new toys. So um, I also wanted to answer a few questions that I have from, from some guys out there um, on my YouTube channel. Um, and I'm going to start with, uh, okay, so first question. Um, somebody asked me, hey, could you explain your workflow and how you, and how you do your photos? I don't know what he really means by that, but workflow is pretty much when I am doing, when I take photos and I come back and I put them into my computer, um, I always start with Lightroom. I'm, I put them in Lightroom pretty much. Sometimes they don't even need to go to Photoshop, but I always start with Lightroom. I want to get the exposure down. I want to get the sharpness. I want to get the picture how I want to. Some pictures might, we, we put them in Lightroom because we sometimes we might mess with the ambient and we see something and you might want it a little bit warmer you might want it a little bit colder or uh, cooler um you might want it a little bit you know you might want to mess with all the settings but i always go through lightroom first once i edit in lightroom then i will send it um over to photoshop for any other kind of um critiquing or any type of fixing that i may may need to do in the picture but yeah that's pretty much my workflow i always start in um lightroom after i do a photo shoot and then I um, go to um, Photoshop. Um, somebody said, what are your thoughts on the 6D Mark II? There is a lot of people with videos out now with rumors about what it will have. What are your thoughts? Um, I don't get into thoughts on 
things that I don't have anything about. Right now, it's just speculation. I don't sit and speculate. I, I could really care less. Um, when it comes out, will I get it? I will actually probably get the 6D Mark II. Um, but it really depends. The six, From what I'm hearing and everybody's speculating, the 6D Mark II is pretty much just an 80, a 80D full frame. Pretty much it. You're going to have an articulated screen. You're going to have the... You know, the megapixels is up in the air. Some people are saying 26, some people are saying 22. What well, is whatever. Um, but I do want to get another full frame camera. I could have got pretty much any of them. Um, but I'm kind of waiting on newer technology for Canon to come out with something newer. Um, just because I want to pair it with my 5D Mark IV. That way when I go to weddings and I put it on my, uh, my money maker or uh, my camera belt, I can have two full frames instead of a full frame and a, <clears throat> a crop sensor. Is that a deal breaker? Absolutely not. I can put a crop sensor, I can use my ADD um, and my 5D Mark IV. They pair absolutely great. So um, the, the ADD is a beast. Um, I love it. They both, um, as you know, the ADD and the 5D Mark IV, both of them that I got, are the only two cameras right now that Canon has that has a dual um, pixel autofocus. That's why I actually have both of them. The only two cameras they have, and I have both of them. So um, I love them. So. Yeah, that's with that. Um, uh, let me see, one more question. Um, what do you think about ND filters and do they compromise your photo? <clears throat> um, I don't think so. So I did a photo shoot, if you guys um, look back on one of my photo shoots I did with a model named Kayla. Um, I had the 85, that's when I was using the 85 millimeter 1.2 L2 um, and I had a two-stop ND filter on it from Tiffin. And you could not tell I had a two-stop ND filter on it. It was really bright outside. I like shooting in bright daylight. Some some photographers kind of shy away from bright daylight. I I know how to shoot in bright daylight. So I was at one eight thousandth of a second, and I was still only about a stop underexposed. And I needed to get I needed to get a lot more underexposed in order to use the flash. Even in, even when I had my model in the shadows. Um, so I popped on the two-stop ND filter and I was able to well underexpose it and use the flash to come out with some amazing pictures. Um, they didn't, I didn't see any softness to them. Um, I don't, I mean, some people might have a different opinion on it, but I will always, I will, I love ND filters. I think there's something that every photographer should have in their bag. Um, so yeah, that's ND filters. Uh, what softbox or octobox do you recommend I get? I'm looking at strip boxes, octo boxes, Westcott, and other and other soft boxes. Um, I don't. That's kind of a two-part question. Uh, if you're not familiar with soft boxes, um, I would definitely say go to Amazon and check out some. Um, it really just depends on your budget, actually. Um, so if you're looking for if you're looking for a good octo box or octo, um, octagon soft box. Um, as you know, a lot of us use Octagon soft boxes. I currently use the Glow Pair Pop. It's a 38-inch um, soft box and um, well, Octagon soft box, and it's absolutely amazing. Um, it's portable. I, I like portability. Um, some people might not like portability. When I first started off, my soft box did not collapse. Um, I was just throwing it in my car and taking it out, and putting it up, and taking it off. Um, but now that that collapsible um, glow pair pop is absolutely amazing. So, but it's kind of expensive. It's up, up there upwards of two hundred dollars. So, it really just depends on what you can afford. All right. But um, I would say if you want don't want to spend that type of money, look into some cheaper options. Um, there there are a lot out there. I have I think I have one in my um, description that you can check out. It was made by it's the one by Godox also, but it was only like thirty five dollars. I used it all the way up in the beginning of my photography, and it was. It performed absolutely excellent. So um, that's all I got, guys. Um, thank you for your time. Um, I am going to get this Sigma 35 millimeter f1.4 R added to the family. I'm definitely going to be doing a shoot with this thing here soon. Um, and then I also am going to be doing a shoot with the A6000 from my point of view, from a Canon shooter. Again, disclaimer, I am definitely not going to Sony. So uh, comment, like, and subscribe, guys. That's my vlog for this week. I'm sorry it took so long. I've been just doing all kind of things. So um, take care and um, keep the questions coming. Uh, make sure my social media, guys, make sure you follow me on Instagram, instagram.com slash Brandon Cole Photography, or follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Brandon Cole Photography. And, um, 
you know, I will keep this thing going and I'll keep bringing you guys the content. Let me know what you guys want to see. Um, and like I said, I'm always getting geared, trying not geared. So thanks a lot. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.